Hi everyone, thank you for attending my talk. I'm going to be presenting uh, CDOM spaces, a new algebraic concept, and their application to construct uh, public key crypto systems. Before we begin, I must apologize that I'm not from this community, so please accept my apology if I explain in too much detail things that you find trivial or skip things that you do not find trivial. And in any case, I'll be happy to take any questions offline. A moment of legacy. Shimon Sidon was a Hungarian mathematician that died an untimely death in 1941. He was an academic brother of Paul Erdős. And other than this very short Wikipedia entry, his legacy includes Sidon sets. These are sets of positive integers such that for any two pairs in, these, in this set, if their sums coincide, then they must be the same pair. In, in words, if one is given a sum, one can identify the um, elements which constitute the sum uniquely. The questions in this area of study is how large T can be, the size of the set, of course, with respect to the range M. Clearly, all sums fit within the range of 2M, and therefore 2M has to be as large as the number of different sums. And respective constructions do exist way back from Paul Erdős's time. In this talk, we're going to discuss crypto applications of Sidon spaces that can be seen as a multiplicative and linear algebraic variant of Sidon sets. A few words about how the research of Sidon spaces came about. In the early 2000s, the hot topic in the coding theory community was network coding. This topic discusses information transmission in networks from multiple sources to multiple sinks. And the surprising result there is that linearly combining packets in intermediate nodes can achieve the capacity of the network. This results in interest in so-called subspace codes. A subspace code is a set of subspaces of the extension field FQ to the N or the base field FQ, such that any two have low dimensional intersection. They are used for error correction in network coding. This observation ignited an influx of research about subspace codes, which, in, which included cyclic subspace codes. These are subspace codes with an additional field structure, mean, meaning that they exploit their construction exploits the structure of the extension field, and not, not, not just its structure as a vector space. And that's where me and my collaborators uh, um, show up. They can be constructed from the so-called seeding space, which we haven't seen the definition of yet. This brings us to this paper, where we show that the same seed-on spaces that were used in this research are also applicable to construct the public key crypto systems. With no further ado, a seed-on space is a subspace of the extension field over the base field, such that take any two pairs of elements and multiply them, if you get the uh, same result of the multiplication, then these pairs must be identical up to a constant multiple from the uh, base field. In other words, given the product, one can determine the elements uniquely up to a multiplication by a scalar. Where is the scalar coming from? Since you can always squeeze any uh, scalar uh, lambda non-zero from the base field here and still get the same product. A similar question, what is the largest K, which is the dimension of the CDO space, with respect to N of a subspace that has this property? Similar counting arguments show that N has to be at least 2K, but give or take. And a respective construction was given by me and my collaborators a few years ago with N equals 2K. I will only remark that a seed on space is not something unique. There are plenty of those, and a rough bound is Q to the uh, Omega of them. Why should they be uh, applicable to uh, cryptography? Intuitively, for A and B in a C down space B, to factor the product to the constituent elements, one must know V. A different V, v would result in a different factorization. So the idea here is Alice choosing a, C down, a secret C down space B 
publishes something that enables the sender to compute products, but still keeps V private. The sender will then encrypt its message A and B to the cipher text AB without knowing B. Alice would then be able to factor AB to A and B since she knows B, but Eve will not be able to do that. In what follows, we show that this can be done not only with Bob not knowing V, but even without knowing that there is any extension field um, in the scheme. The question is, which V should Alice use? Which C non space? And the answer is literally any, as long as she knows some efficient factorization algorithm. We naturally use the construction uh, that we had in the paper way back uh, when, which is rather simple, omitting some technicalities. The construction is as follows. Take any gamma which does not lie in the intermediate field f u to the k, where um, n equals 2k, and take the simple construction of all elements of the form u plus u to the q gamma, where u is in the intermediate field. In a nutshell, this works since one and gamma are linearly independent over the intermediate field. And therefore, the product of two elements from this V, which have this form for some U and V in the intermediate field, can be described as a linear combination of one and gamma. The coefficients in this linear combinations are from the intermediate field and can be rather easily extracted. This gives us an efficient factorization algorithm for products in these in C down spaces V that were constructed according to our construction. The challenge here, I repeat, is to enable Alice to publish something which enables the sender to compute products in V but does not expose V. The idea that we use is as follows. Fix some basis V1 through VK for your C down space V and observe that for every two elements A, B in it, they can of course be uh, represented as a linear combination of those V1 through VK over the base field. However, when we compute the product between these uh, linear combination, move it to vector form, and then move it to a matrix form, we see that the so-called multiplication table here arises. This probably doesn't come as a great surprise to many of you that already know that multiplication in finite fields is technically a bilinear form. Therefore, our idea here is to publish the multiplication table V of a secret C down space without revealing its identity. This happens as follows. The parameters of the system are Q, the base field size, and K, the dimension of the C down space, n here would be just 2k. Alice begins by choosing a construction for the extension field and a basis. A construction of some C down space, again, will be random, and, and a respective uh, basis. Then Alice will construct the so-called multiplication table of V, which is this basis transpose times itself. This is a k by k matrix over the extension field fq to the n. And as such, it can be represented as a linear combination of uh, some matrices times the uh, basis elements beta one through beta n. These matrices over here are k by k matrices over fq. These matrices will be precisely the public key which Alice publishes. When Bob wants to send something to Alice, it will map its message into two vectors of length k over fq and send the bilinear product of these elements by the matrix M. Moving on, when Alice receives this uh, ciphertext, she uses the secret basis of the extension field to compute the following linear combination. It equals this expression, where you can see that the expression here inside the parenthesis is simply the multiplication table of the secret C down space V. As such, this linear combination is simply a product between two elements in the secret C down space V. Therefore, 
these two elements can be extracted, from which Ellis can extract the precise vectors a1 through ak and b1 through bk, which is Bob's message. Let's think about the hardness of this. Eve sees, one, one thing that she sees is the public key, i.e. the matrices uh, M1 through Mn, which uh, compose the uh, multiplication table of the Cedon space. Yet she does not know the basis of the Cedon space, nor the basis of the extension field, which are used in this expression. She also sees the ciphertext, meaning the a uh, bilinear product of the message by the matrices MI. Therefore, she needs to solve this bilinear set of equations, which has n variables and n equations. This is the reason that we uh, categorize this crypto system as a multivariate. Multivariate crypto systems are normally broken by min rank attack in either one of two formulations, the kernel formulation and the minor formulation, which we'll discuss briefly. In this paper, we prove that both formulations succeed only with very small probability, specifically exponentially small in the size of the plain text. We support these experiments, uh, we support these findings with experiments and discuss several specialized techniques. I would like to disclaim that we're not claiming any breakthrough in post-quantum cryptography here. We have hardness proofs for attacks uh, of this form, which are quite common, but we do not have a hardness proof of the Cedon crypto systems in general. So Eve sees these, uh, these matrices that were constructed as such, where this is the multiplication table of the Cedon space. Observe that this multiplication table is simply a rank one matrix over the extension. Therefore, to extract the, pub, the private key from the public key, Eve needs to find a rank one linear combination of the MIs where the coefficients come from the extension field. This will allow her to find uh, the basis of the CDOM space and therefore to break the system. Stated formally, given the public key, one needs to find the beta i's in the extension field such that the respective rank of this target matrix is one. This is a min rank problem with a few notable differences. Those mi's are over the base field where the coefficients are over the extension field. Normally in min rank, these are the same field. The solution beta i should be a basis to an extension field and the resulting VI should spend some seed of space. It is unclear to us what can be done if this system is solved and the solution does not satisfy these requirements. Nevertheless, we focus on finding any solution, not necessarily which satisfies these extra conditions. In its first formulation, the idea is that any vector in the target matrix gives rise to this system of linear equations, linear in the lambda i. Since there are um, k, which is n over two linear equations here, and n lambda i's, if we manage to, to find, meaning to guess, two or more such u's, we get a system with a potential to pin down the um, exact solution lambda i. However, this is not feasible. The kernel here, I remind you, is over the extension field. Therefore, if you choose u at random, the probability that this u in, is in the kernel is exponentially small in the size of the extension field. Therefore, it is unlikely that this uh, guess will work, even if you only want to find one, and nevertheless, if you need to find two. You might suggest to cheat and guess a vector in the base field, rather than the extension field, which is doomed to fail, and this thing over here is a one-line proof. In the minor formulation of the min rank attack, we observe that if the rank of the uh, target matrix is indeed one, it implies that all two by two minors, meaning all determinants of two by two matrices, should be zero. 
This provides, setting all the two by two minors to zero, provides a quadratic system in the lambda i's. This system is usually solved via, via linearization, meaning every pair lambda i, lambda j is replaced by a single variable zij. And then we build the resulting coefficient matrix, call it omega, which is now over fq. This uh, coefficient matrix corresponds to a linear system with about n square variables and n to the fourth equations. We know that the dimension of this kernel is at least one. This is simply since the system is solvable. The secret basis, the solution to the system, does give you a solution to the linear system. If the dimension of the kernel here is at most one, we can find it. We'll find a solution, arrange it in a matrix, it would be an n by n matrix. This would be provably um, a rank one matrix. We're going to find this rank one decomposition and output its elements, the elements of the uh, respective vector as our solution. However, if the dimension of the kernel here happens to be more than one, we're essentially stuck because we are left with another min rank problem. Once we've found the, the uh, kernel of omega, inside that kernel, we need to find the respective z, which is of rank one. This is technically the same problem as we began. In most random instances, linearization works in the minor formulation and the dimension of the kernel would indeed be one. In all instances resulting from Sidon Kerta system, we have that the dimension of the kernel omega equals 2n. To put it more formally, we have verified experimentally for any value of q and every value of k that the dimension of the kernel is 2n. We have been able to partially explain that mathematically, and we showed that for every q and k, the dimension of the resulting um, kernel of omega is at least n. Meaning there is no straightforward forward way to solve the minor formulation of mirroring problem via linearization. A few words about the proof outline. What we prove is that in the minor formulation of min rank, there are at least n linearly independent vectors in the, in the kernel of omega. <clears throat> what we do in the proof is that we take the multiplication table of the entire secret field fq to the n, which gives rise to these matrices bi. In some sources in the literature, this is called the uh, multipl uh, multiplication tensor of the field. And up to some change of basis, we, we, we show that some vectorization of bi is in the kernel of omega. An interesting fact we observe is that when we're doing sort of the secondary attack, meaning we, we try to find a rank one matrix in the kernel of omega, perhaps this is solvable, solvable by linearization, we find once again that the same uh, vectors are also in the kernel. This also happens in your uh, the third time that you do this and the fourth time and so on. I find this to be a very interesting phenomenon. We were able to explain that mathematically, but we're not sure exactly what's the bigger picture. Different attacks that we implemented, we tried to apply Robin basis algorithm on the generic main rank, and as expected, it was exponential. We also applied several Robin basis algorithm to find an equivalent, an equivalent seed on space, which perform the worst out of all attacks. Our code is, code is available on GitHub if any of you is interested. For future work, right, two um, venues. One of them is to attack the system, probably by exploiting the structure of the on space. We really don't know how. And another thing which we weren't very able to do is to analyze the bit security of the system. Another venue, which we have a few suggestions, is uh, to strengthen the system. First of all, to understand where these extra n dimensions in the kernel are coming from. Second is to use a generalization of Sidon space that's called R Sidon space. 
in an R CDOM space, you have unique R products instead of unique pairwise products. In other words, a CDOM space is a two CDOM space. Some constructions are known in the same paper, but we have a few years ago. Another thing that will strengthen the system is instead of using one dimensional multiplication table, we can use a two or three or whatever dimension multiplication table. Meaning, instead of publishing VV transposed, we publish UU transposed plus VV transposed, meaning the additions of two different multiplication tables. This would result in, attack, in an attack which is trilinear instead of bilinear, and therefore the resulting system will be more difficult. Thank you for your attention, and I'll be happy to take any questions.